Hello, boys and girls. My name is Silo. This is Bob. He's here to make sure that I stay on track. Today I would like to tell you about something unusual that happened to me recently. In the past couple of weeks, I actually had nightmares. This is a very rare event for me. I don't usually have nightmares. I control enough of my fear that I usually don't get afraid of something. But I do know that fear is actually produced by a gland. There is a gland in your body that triggers the fright, the fight or flight reaction in your body. And there is a gland or there is a secretion which causes you to grow fearful. And I know that there are glands that do this and I will tell you why involving a story. A few years ago, I went home, twice a year, I go home, back to my home state, to honor my dead, to say hello to the living, and to visit the places that I grew up. And as I was coming back from visiting some graveyards, I was getting on the pathway to return home, and this pathway passes by one of my cousin's houses. And I was actually considering going toward the cousin's house and going for a visit. And I don't know where the idea popped into my mind, but it did. And as I was coming up to the intersection that either led me home or led me over to my cousin a couple of blocks away, I decided, oh well, I can just go ahead and head on home and skip visiting him again this year. Well, as soon as I drove through that intersection, Oh my God, I had to poop. I had to poop right now. Oh my God, I was crowning. If I didn't find a toilet in the next 60 seconds, I was going to soil myself. I had to find a crapper as soon as possible. And then I thought to myself, the best place to go would be back at my cousin's. So as soon as I found my first business parking lot to turn around in, I turned around my car, I headed back to my cousin's, and the urge disappeared. Completely gone. And I, I'm driving back toward my cousin, I'm going, that's weird. Ten seconds ago, I was almost crapping my pants, and yet now, there's nothing. So I said, well, I might as well continue home. So I pulled into the next business that I came up on, and I turned around in their parking lot, and I started heading home again, and oh my God, it hit me again. Oh, glory, I had to find a crapper. I was, I was about ready to pull off to the side of the road and drop my drawers right there. The best place to find a crapper at this very moment, the one that I could access, all the businesses, it was a Sunday, there was, there was a possibility a lot of them in the small town would be closed. The best place to go would be back at my cousin's house. I turned around again in a parking lot and headed toward my cousin and the feeling completely disappeared. It doesn't take an Einstein. I had just visited a bunch of dead people and rather than having me skip my cousin's house on my way home, it was obvious that someone was pressing a button someplace that was telling me to go visit my cousin. So I do know that ghosts and spirits and whatnot do have or are aware of the buttons that they can press to cause you to think you're having physical reaction. Which leads me to my nightmares. I'm not afraid of much. 
uh, ghosts and goblins and spirits, they don't bug me. I can actually sleep in a graveyard and without any fear whatsoever. I can go into fights and not fear feel a ounce of fear hitting me. I have that much control over my fear. One night I was in the living room and the sweeper turned on all by itself. And I went, yawn. But at the same time, for some reason, I felt an overwhelming sense of fear. And I'm looking at myself and I'm going, why am I feeling so fearful? The sweeper just turned on by itself. Big deal. It, it, you know, I can get over that. Why am I so fearful? And as I started tracing down the source of my fear, it disappeared. They obviously didn't want me finding out where my fear was coming from. Which leads me to a couple of dreams that I had over the last couple of days. And on one of them, there was a four-lane road that was aimed up to the top of a mountain. And it was a four-lane bridge. And it was one of those kinds where it has an arch underneath the roadway. And it was heading straight up to the top of this mountain. And after the first mile of a general good incline, the center lane dropped away, so it was now a three-lane road. And the road got a little bit steeper. And then after another mile, the second inner lane would drop away, and you'd now be on a two-lane road that was heading even steeper up this mountain. And you can guess it. Yes, that's right. After the third mile, the third inner lane dropped away, and it was just you on a single road with guardrails and a great big mile-long arch leading up to the top of this mountain. Now, I have few fears, but I'll be telling you the truth. Anytime that I'm on a road with an arching arch underneath a bridge that goes off forever, I'm slowing down to about 20 or 30 miles an hour, and I'm ignoring all the horns that are honking behind me in my lane, because for whatever reason, I'm going to make it across this bridge, but I'm doing it at my own pace. You want to travel across to 70 miles an hour? Feel free. I can see the depth over on the side of the road, and I'm not going to go fast enough that I lose control. So I'm looking at this bridge, and I'm watching a car, and this time I'm on an aerial view of this bridge, and I'm watching this car go up it, and I am just feeling ice cold inside. I am one of those people that when you see those videos of those people who climb to the top of the building without any rigging on, and they're taking selfies while they're up there and walking on beams and stuff, no, not, no, 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 never in a million years. I'm not going up there. Ah, uh, you want me to climb on a footstool? You better let me have a safety roof, uh, a safety rope just to climb up on a footstool. I'm not going up on any tall building. I'm not crossing a bridge at 70 miles an hour that only has one lane on it, and it is three miles high in the sky. Nope, nope, nope. So that was pretty fearful. And at the top of the mountain, when the car that I was observing reached the top of the mountain, I heard this voice going, you think that's scary? Look over to the left. And I looked over to the left, and there was a single road that repeated the function going downward. And I started imagining being that person pulling over that edge to go down that single road Headed for the bottom. Yeah, it's picking up lanes as you get closer and closer to the bottom. But I would be, uh, my foot would be on that brake pedal. And I would be praying to the highest power that I could think of that that brake was not going to give out. So this leads me to my sec second nightmare of the past few days. 
And that was, I'm half asleep in my bastard bedroom. I had fallen asleep doing some writing. And I'm lying there. And both in and out of a dream, I know I'm lying on my bed. And I suddenly hear the vacuum cleaner turn on in the living room. And a wave of fear is hitting me. Because I'm in the living room. I know the doors are locked. And somehow or another, this vacuum has turned on. And I can hear it down the hallway in the living room. It's moving around because you can hear it picking up little plastics and stuff. And they're bouncing around the little container where it keeps all the trash and stuff. And it's coming closer and closer down the hallway. And I'm screaming in terror. Ah! Ah! Stay on your topic. Thank you, Bob. Anyway, I am screaming in terror. Because this vacuum is getting closer and closer to my room. And the funniest thing was, over the cries of fear and terror, I'm also screaming, Yes! Yes! Please! Sweep my hallway! <laughs> sweep my hallway! Yes! I know you're coming to consume my soul, but please, on your way, get along the baseboard. Get along the sides. Make sure you sweep every single spot. So I'm sitting there in bed, and I, I am so convinced that there is a demonic sweeper heading in my direction that I cracked one eyeball open, and I got just enough awake so that I could see if there was actually any real sweeper coming in my bedroom that night, you know, demonically possessed, that I need to be aware of, and whenever I didn't see a real sweeper in real time, I shut that eye again, and I drifted back in the dream, and all the while I'm going, yes, yes, oh, thank you, thank you, evil spirit, thank you, ah, thank you for cleaning my house, oh, please, thank you. And whenever I woke up, I realized, you know, this could work out. This could be a real, real nice thing. I mean, okay, evil spirit, you want to possess my vacuum? Feel free. Possess my vacuum every Tuesday and Friday and sweep up the entire apartment and I will scream in terror the entire time as long as you get near the baseboards and get in the corners. And I was thinking, you know, Perhaps there might be a, a demonic spirit that could show up once a week. And I'd go, ah, you're here for my soul. You're here for my soul. I also have a pile of dishes that need done. Ah, don't take my soul. But the washcloth is over there. The, the dish soap is over there. If you wouldn't mind, you know, demonically cleaning that while you're, while you're, prancing and telling me that you're going to take my soul, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, are you an evil Indian? We're, we're buried on an Indian ground, and you're an evil Indian uh, medicine man? Come back for vengeance? That's perfectly fine. But tell me something. Do you know how to fold clothes? Because you can come back and haunt me as much as you want, as long as you know how to put laundry into a lawn, into a washing machine and can fold them afterwards. And I really would appreciate it if you also knew how to separate the colors from the whites and knew how to wash delicates in their own. And then I started thinking, you know, this could be a really, really good business, too. I mean, you know, um, Evil Goblin, you want to come and haunt somebody? Fine. You know the Hendersons down the street with those two little girls? They need haunted 
every Tuesday and Thursday. And at the same time, they need to have their tubs and toilets cleaned. So you go haunt the girls and then go clean the tub and the, uh, tub and the toilet. And we will call it even. And you can scare the you can scare the pants off the little girls, but please make sure everything shines before you leave. And I, I can imagine picking up the phone, going, "Hello, haunting housework. Promise you'll scream, and we'll work your house clean. How may I help you? Uh, you need the spirit of a I, I, you know I have the spirit of a dead grandmother who would be." Ex extremely happy to cook for your large family and she'll do the dishes when she's finished she's the spirit of a dead grandmother who is who is tired of haunting her disrespectful grandkids and she's looking for someone else to haunt and she makes a fantastic meatloaf it can be quite profitable How do I get in contact with these spirits to arrange this though? But you know, you don't mind having a little ghosty show up to to make you, you know, run down the hall in terror as long as it's going out and walking your dog the same night? This could be quite lucrative. lucrative. My name is Silo. That's Bob. My name is Silo. And these are my words.